Welcome to Leadership and People. This is a series that pulls back the curtain on leadership by interviewing CEOs, senior executives, and entrepreneurs who've had large exits. We ask these experts about how they built trusted networks to rapidly grow their companies and what advice they wish they knew if they could do it all again. So that's you know one of the most important decisions, assessing whether you think it's a winning team or not. Um, all things being equal, the team is what makes the difference. I mean, it's you know, said, it's kind of trite saying, but it's really true that it's better to invest in a B idea with an A team rather than an A idea with a B team. Um, today on the show, we've got part two with John Richards. Uh, John's a very successful angel investor. He runs a entrepreneur boot, boot camp. He had a very large exit back in the dot-com days. Um, if you didn't catch one, really would recommend go back and and see what he did in, to innovate in the Yellow Pages industry and, and team up with some folks from Microsoft to uh, take a big company public. Um, John, when we were finishing off, we were talking about Startup Ignition and this entrepreneur boot camp you have in Provo. It, it's in Provo, correct? Is that the, where location is? Yes, mm-hmm. at the uh, Startup Building in Provo. Oh, great. That's a fun building, huh? Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I was really interested as you were talking about how, um, you know, there's – in an effort to be understanding a failure or something, we've really got this uh, attitude that um, there's a lot of folks, at least in the startup community, it feels like where, as you were saying, they say, oh, you know, yeah, that startup didn't work, but it only cost me two years. That's cheap tuition. And you made the point, well, yeah, but what if we could have had you learn stuff for two years on something that was successful? Mm -hmm. Um, Can you talk about how that type of mentality and, and principles from the lean startup and things like this are used in your... Bootcamp? Sure, sure. Well, Lean Startup is, uh, you know, a, a revelatory, not just a revolution, but a revelation uh, to entrepreneurship. And it's now about 10 years old. It's coming up on 10 years old. And it's based on a lot of res- research and scientific work to find out what makes entrepreneurial ventures succeed and what makes them fail. And, uh, you know, part of the core principles behind Lean Startup are that you're going the the idea is to fail faster and get to success faster. So in other words, lean startup doesn't change the failure rate of human ideas in business. They're still going to fail at the same rate. But what it is is how we go about implementing those ideas. We're going to do rapid experimentation and really try to find out what business models will work with before we build a product and start scaling when we don't even know what our business model is. And so the idea is to fail 30 times really fast in the first few months and arrive at the winning business model that you can then scale because you know it will work as opposed to starting a company with an idea and pretending to be a company by doing all the things like hiring people, renting a big office, and going out and doing all sorts of scaling activity when you don't even know what your business model is. And we call that premature scaling. So Lean Startup, what it is trying to do is to help you fail faster and avoid premature scaling. And that's really the core of uh, Lean Startup, and it's the core of what we do at Startup Ignition, helping uh entrepreneurs to really find a business model in a rapid way with little money and time spent so that they can spend the time and money on an already known business model that will work. And it's really an exciting process. When I was introduced to this, it changed my entrepreneurial and my angel investing life because uh, I was now able to know why things would or would not succeed or why they would fail and and to have some predictability to it, which is uh, really, you know, like I said, a revelatory experience in entrepreneurship. You know, um, I too am a big fan. Our, um, our consulting firm, Mylan Advisors, that's, that's also a member of Corporate Alliance um, in the C4 Club with you, uh, we are a affiliate of the Shingo Institute. So we teach lean, uh, maybe more in like healthcare and manufacturing energy mm-hmm. spaces. But, um, you know, that book and the way that it like, it gets down to those root cause analysis <laughs> and like, it's just like confronting the brutal facts early. Um, mm-hmm. it, it's what an advantage over pretending, right? Yep, exactly. And, uh, you know, it's, it's fascinating. I when I got introduced to it, I back tested my entire career, and it explained why I was successful or why I failed. And and now since I was exposed to it, it's it's been a really reliable uh, framework from which to operate. So it's been good. And so um, you know, here with a the theme about leadership and people, um, 
what what kind of advice do you have for these for these individuals in your boot camp about how they should be networking and about um, you know getting out of the office? Oh well, first of all, Startup Ignition is uh, just all about networking with mentors and also with the peers. So uh, an average cohort's about 20 people, and we've now had over 150 alumni. And uh, there's a really strong alumni group and and some really strong uh, peer-to-peer networking that goes on, and that's proven valuable. They'll form ad hoc lunch groups that go out to lunch once a week and report on their progress as an entrepreneur. Uh, I encourage them to go out to lunch at least three of the five business days a week because uh, everybody has to eat, and some of the people that they really want to get to and reach, they could never afford to pay for their time, but they can all buy them lunch for ten dollars, and you know, just all sorts of. Uh, encouragement to to have that kind of attitude again it's back to the principle that you don't you know figure out a business model by sitting at a cubicle or in your office looking at your computer screen yeah um, <clears throat> well thinking about corporate alliance specifically um, when you when you come and you talk about this this startup incubator um, is the primary benefit for, for you or for Startup Ignition that you're getting referrals of students or what what's what do you feel like are some of the primary benefits? Well, I, and I just want to clarify that it's not an incubator. It's a, oh, it's I'm a, sorry. It, yeah, it's a boot, boot camp. camp. Yeah, incubator is kind of a, a name that uh, for more uh, an accelerator. I was a co-founder of Boom Startup, the, the accelerator in, this, the, in the state of Utah. That's the leading accelerator. Um, I sold out to my partner a few years ago, but I just want to clarify that. Yeah, yeah, so start, sorry. No, good, so, good point. Yeah, so Startup Ignition, that was boot camp. What it uh, gets out is just exposure. There's so many people that are interested in are thinking about starting a company and wanting to do it. And the mission I have is to really help people not waste time and capital. Uh, you know, spending $30,000 of your life savings and a year and a half of your life on a venture that never should have been started or should have pivoted and changed really early on is just not a good experience for anyone. And so uh, there's people that are active in corporate alliance that know probably on average 10 people starting a company or doing something entrepreneurial in the early stages. And, uh, and a lot of them, they're watching them like a chain train wreck. They're saying, this one's going to end badly, but I don't know what to say or do. Well, one of the things they could say or do is recommend startup ignition to them. And that's kind of one of the things that we can get out of corporate alliance because, uh, successful people tend to attract those who want to be like them and so they come to them for help and guidance when they're starting companies but most people um, haven't spent the time and the and the um, and studied it and been trained to teach people how to start companies like I have so they can easily farm that off to me and that's what why it's a good situation for me to be in corporate alliance um, you know it, it is interesting just how efficient boot camps can be, right? Like mm-hmm. we ha- we had a I interviewed Colt, uh, I think one of your son's co-founders from Dev yes. Mountain mm-hmm. uh, after their exit, and um, you know we I interviewed a guy named Adam Braun who who started Pencils of Promise that's doing one out in New York, and he has you know Spotify and all these big brands who are saying like, will you just let us know who's graduating and mm-hmm. and have them talk straight to us, you know? Yeah, and. Um, when you think about like the cost, like uh, how, how much is startup ignition? Well, we have two curriculum. Our, our first curriculum, the one that is really what people think of when they think of startup ignition, we call our nail course, which is about nailing your business model. So it's from start to nailing a business model, and that's twenty five hundred dollars tuition for a thirteen week program, and includes you know alumni status and ongoing mentoring after the graduation date. So it it's a really good value, and we have a lot of. Um, vendors and service providers that provide free or very low cost services to our participants and alumni which greatly makes up for any tuition paid anyway so it's really kind of a net gain for the people that participate because they can get so much good help and I've vetted out a lot of good service providers that will really give affordable help to these companies in the early stages so well, that's I... go ahead well, I was going to say, you know, not not that it's a apples to apples comparison, but I mean, what is a what is a four year degree cost? Yeah. Years, right. Yeah. Yeah. 
I know. I it's uh, I'm very concerned about higher education. Uh, it's it's very poor at teaching skills. And I just went to lunch literally with two BYU graduates who told me that their degree did nothing for them and they can't land a job. And uh, they're really talented individuals, but everybody, you know, there's so many. Uh, they said that one job they went for in the first day, the employer got 130 resumes. And, and there's just such a glut of college graduates that don't have any skills. And what these companies are looking for is not degrees. They're looking for what have you done, what can you do. But if you're a college graduate who got a four-year degree that had no skills training, you can't do anything. And that's a problem. And I'm hearing this more and more. I, I, I Something's got to change, um, you know, but we're talking about a tenure system. We're talking about really high salaries for professors. We're talking about um, a lot of high tuition that's gone up straight for 25 years. There's a lot of money and in politics involved, but you're right that the boot camps, I think, if, if you're going to say, how do we educate and prepare for the workforce and keep America skilled and competitive, I don't know if there's anything more efficient than this boot camp, which is basically skilled, knowledgeable people that are bringing that knowledge and skill to the trainee or the student without all of the massive middleman expenses taking all those tuition dollars in between and it's super efficient it really is well you know i I was telling you before we started i think you know you could probably pretty easy classify like 10 of my 12 businesses as total failures and Mm -hmm. i think like would i have had to wander around in the woods so much if i could have taken something like this 15 years ago you know yeah and uh i felt the same way it, it, I, you know, it, there's so much help available to entrepreneurs these days. No entrepreneur needs needs to go alone. They should seek out mentors and seek out help because there is a lot of help available. We live in a very pro entrepreneurial time right now. So, anyone starting a business should seek out help because doing it on your own is a very expensive endeavor. Yeah. Well, um, shifting gears a little bit. Um, thinking about some of our, you know, fellow members in C4. Um, you know, the show we would talk about people and leadership. Um, who are some of the friends you've made in, in C4 or people that you feel like are, are leaders worth learning from? Well, now you're uh, going to put me on the spot and see how good I am remembering names and all that. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but, uh, you know, Brad Caldwell of Security Metrics, I went on a golfing trip and was in his foursome. That was a really good connection and introduction. And he's a stellar person. And I really enjoy getting to know him. Um, uh, the Woodbury family, which, you know, owner of University Mall and the Woodbury Corporation. And um, that was fun getting to know them. Uh, the the CEO, and I'm having a hard time remembering his name, so now this is going to go out public on that, but uh, got to know the CEO of Costa Vida, and he and I just had a real affinity for one another because of similar ages and things like that in life, and, and it goes beyond just business and we're you know yeah. learning from each other about our families and where we're at in life and things like that. Uh, there's just been a whole a slew of things like that, and there's actually some people that I mentored when they were students that are now in there, and it's kind of fun. Oh, that's got to be fun. Yeah, yeah, so... You know, well, you... You brought up Jeff Rust before, you know, to me, he's a guy that kind of like, he really leads with that servant leadership type of what can I do for you Mm -hmm. type of way about him. Yep. Yeah. I I know Jeff and his wife and we've traveled as part of the BYU Entrepreneurship Center groups and different things like that. So he is, he's, he's a great guy. What about outside of C4? Who's someone that had a, a real positive impact either early in your life or early in your career? Well, there's been a number. Um, early in my career, uh, some folks that I work with and kind of an uh, older gentleman that was in my life, he's now deceased, but he taught me a lot about life and about business and taught me how to fire people properly because that's one of the tasks when you become a business owner and entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. How do you terminate someone properly and all those kind of little tricks and tips. One, one mentor that's here in Utah that's been affiliated with BYU Center for Entrepreneurship that really... I just look up to him as a fellow named Steve Gibson, mm. who who was uh, helped in the 90s really build the Center for Entrepreneurship at BYU up. And he was one of the first investors in 1-800-CONTACTS and Ancestry and in Omniture and all those type of businesses around Utah. And he, he uh, I met him and 
I, I want to be like him when I grew up kind of thing. And and then I did kind of follow in his footsteps at BYU doing that. And he's he's been a good person. And he has quotes like, work a few years like nobody else will. Live the rest of your life like nobody else can. Meaning, you know, that's entrepreneurship's not about workaholic uh, that dies an early grave because they work too hard. It's about somebody who's willing to temporarily sacrifice and give it all in order to have freedom you know, perpetually afterwards, which is just an interesting concept and a way of looking at it. So anyway, things like that. Yeah, for sure. Well, um, I'm interested as you've done angel investing and things like this, um, you know, there's such a opportunity, I think, for people to get excited about something that sounds flashy or sounds cool. And, you know, it really is just a hyper speculative investment um, how do you make decisions yourself? What are, what are some of your standards of, as you've, as you've made decisions about what you're going to back when it comes to, you know, what's in your circle of competence and, and how do you get comfortable with certain amounts of risk or not? Yeah. Well, you're talking specifically as an angel investor and sure. investing in companies. So, uh, well, obviously the entrepreneur or the team is very vital. So that's, you know, one of the most important decisions assessing whether you think it's a winning team or not. Um, all things being equal, the team is what makes the difference. I mean, it's, you know, said, it's kind of trite saying, but it's really true that it's better to invest in a B idea with an A team rather than an A idea with a B team. And so that's really critical. But also, I have my favorite types of businesses. Like, um, there's when we talk about types of ventures, there's archetypes like one actor models, multi actor models, marketplaces. And what these means are like, you know, simple businesses with one actor means, you know, you're selling to one customer uh, and you don't have to worry about any other users or customers. It's real easy. So, for instance, uh, business to business, uh, as we call it, B2B. SaaS, software as a service company. So B2B SaaS is one of my favorite places to invest because they tend to be one actor um, business models that are simple, but the market gives them very high multiples on exits. So uh, you can spend the same time and energy working on a business that has low exit multiples or the same time and energy on a business with a high exit multiple. And so B2B SaaS just happens to be you know, a business that gets high multiples. Omniture, for example, of which I was an early investor in, was um, uh, you know a classic B two B SaaS business and um, and uh, great was business, that, with great multiples. Was that exit number public when Adobe bought them? Yeah. What, what did what did Omniture go for? One point eight billion. Yeah, that's incredible. Yep. Very very good. Yep. Met Josh and John when I flew down from Seattle and went to a second story office kind of a dingy little place on center street in provo and wrote them a check and that ended up doing well (laughs) that's exciting uh but there again it is interesting like you know people and skills and leadership um how often like that human connection if if you can't get that right uh you can you know you can get a you can get a lot of things right but if you miss the human element how, how things just don't work yeah, and, and one of the big stumbling blocks in entrepreneurship, too, is a lot of young entrepreneurs that are talented in so many ways, they actually are very poor people managers because they've never done it and they don't know how to do it. So one of the things that I tell them is go get the book, The New One Business, The New One Minute Manager. Um, it's just a really, you know, The One Minute Manager was a book I read years ago, and now there's a new version updated. But it just, if you don't know anything about people management, you've got to quickly find a way that you can, in an efficient, quick way, become at least a decent manager of people. Because if you can't manage people, you're going to ultimately fail. Yeah. A- any other top book recommendations that were helpful to you? Well, in, Le- uh, in Lean Startup, the absolute Bible is a book, not actually the Lean Startup by Eric Reese, but it's the Startup Owner's Manual by Steve Blank. That is the masterpiece in the industry. And uh, the, I already mentioned The Innovator's Dilemma and that series of books by Clayton Christensen, which is really good and, and excellent. And, um, you know, uh, if you want a more recent book, one of the recent books that I recommend to people and people seem to really love is a book called Traction. And mm. so that's really been uh, popular. So understanding uh, what real traction in a business is, and it's really been popular. So that's those the, are some of them. That's the DuckDuckGo guys, right? 
Um, yeah, the well, there's two different traction books. I want to make sure it's oh. it's the right one. Um, Is and, the one and, where it's giving you like, hey, here's the like 16 different options. You know, here's the different ideas of of getting that initial traction. Yeah, and and just well, uh, you know, probably best for me just to say who uh yeah yeah you know who the um author is instead because there's two books this is the one by gabriel weinberg yeah and uh and so uh and, you know and he also has you know co-author justin mars but it's so practical right yeah and it's just it's just about explosive customer growth and traction and it really lends itself well to software-based companies in today's world and and um it just I don't know. It, it, you know, for instance, like, you know, people all the time say, "How do I know if my business is getting traction, or what do I need to do to get traction?" And that's just this book really is thorough in answering that question. So you're right; it is the Duck Duck Go folks, of course, and and all that. But uh, and it's their experience and what they've written in. But it, it just, I guess, you know, it's kind of like if you um, were to talk to any of our great leaders in Utah, like Josh James at Domo, formerly Amateur, and all that, and you ask them what's the most important thing and they're going to say revenue 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 traction 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 and this is a book about that topic and what it really means and it's really i think been good so that's great well we appreciate how much time you spent with us what what's a question that we didn't ask that i didn't ask that i should have asked or what what's something what's a good piece of advice for everyone out there to close with um boy let's see uh i think um for those that are thinking about following a career path or getting into something new or doing something, they need to go out and find somebody that's already doing it and shadow them and find out what their life's really like. What I find a lot of uh, disheartening experiences for especially young people that are figuring their way out in life is they think they want to be this or do that, but then they get there and it's not the life they expected. So for instance, for myself, um, I was had the fortune of being able to shadow a couple doctors when I thought I wanted to be a doctor, and I did that, and I didn't like their lifestyle. I didn't like what they did during the day. I didn't like some of the things they had to deal with, and I found out it wasn't for me by shadowing them, actually, but the entire time before, I had this great vision of, oh, you know, kind of a rainbow dream of what it would be like to be a doctor, and so, uh, you know, especially a surgeon, and so... And for me, it just wasn't for me. And it's just kind of interesting. And I think that's one of the tips in life is that when you're trying to figure out your way to go, um, find other people that are actually doing it and see if you truly like the life they have. Because sometimes it's very surprising they, that it's not for you, but you only discover that after investing in a four-year degree or two years of, you know, borrowing money for some special education program just make sure you want to do that that's great advice well again appreciate you making time for the show and uh and for all you've shared with us all right well thank you very much it was an honor thanks